I want to start off with Mike Buka. Mike owns Bullshed Baits, uh, and I want to show you what that is all about. Mike, first of all, you've been doing it for about eight years. That's correct. How did you start off? I mean, what what made you get, what said, Mike, you just got to do this? Uh, I get asked that question a lot, Hugh. Uh, I used to be a full-time guide on Alatoona Lake and uh, out of Atlanta. And um, one of the things that I struggled with was catching a lot of the quality fish. There was no yeah. problem catching a lot of numbers, but the quality fish was always eluding me. And a lot of times, which what normal people do is they usually go down in size. Right. Well, I just started to go up in size. And what I noticed in the fish that I caught, was you would see those forked tails coming out of the gullets of the fish. That's right, doesn't it? And, yeah. you know, and, and I, you look online, and at the time, there was nothing, you mm -hmm. know. There's no shad swim baits. There's nothing big enough to really make a difference. So that's when I set out, and I made my own. And, you know, I didn't plan on making this thing worldwide or, 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 or as big as it is or whatever <laughs> you know and I, it just went from word of mouth from my god service and people talked and people wanted bass and it just snowballed from there and it got to the point where i'm no longer a full-time god i'm now a full-time swim bass <laughs> so, and yeah. fish very little do you <laughs> you're, you're right i don't not near as much as i used to i tell you what mike you're, you're exactly right and, and I, I love the baits it, and they're so lifelike they got a great action. You got a, a deal on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, if if anybody wants to go look, they can look up Bullshad or go to Mike Buka to his Facebook page, and you've got little uh, video clips yep, of this website. stuff coming through the water. Yes. And oh my gosh, they are so realistic looking. Yep. Uh, just, uh, I mean, you just want to go through there and bite at your own self. But mm -hmm. I want to show some things. This is, uh, now, this is a little bit different one. I mean, you, you some of your bull sheds are, are thick. Uh, but what do you call this one? That's my bull herring. The bull herring. That's correct. It's, it mimics a herring, a blueback herring, and also also an alewife. Okay. Which are very similar in species. But I built that bait for Lanier, you know, and that was there's not a lot of herring baits out there, and I fished Lanier a good bit, so I kind of catered it toward the Lanier fish, and I know and what I knew about blueback herring from fishing Lanier so much. Bobby Gentry, you don't see this. <laughs> Looks just like an alewife, Bobby. You don't need this, brother. Uh, Dale Holla, we've got Dale Holla here, mm -hmm. Mike, and, and alewives are are predominant in cool. in Dale Holla, and so this would be just awesome to use it at Dale Holla. All right, this is the this is the uh, blueback herring. I want to show uh, now. This is your. Five inch model? That's my six inch. Six inch, okay. Now this is just the bull shad. That is it, one and only. In, in the six inch model. I, I'm losing my earpiece and everything. So uh, this one here comes with two trebles? Absolutely. What, what size trebles are you using? In I use number twos on that one. Okay. Uh, and number four. That's a pretty good size treble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I use the KVD must add hooks on them and the uh, hyperwire split rings. And I used the best, that's the way I consider the best. Uh, yeah, it's one, some of the very, very best. I love the eyes. Mm -hmm. Those are like eyes that you get on uh, like a, a, a white-tailed deer that you'll have mounted or something right. like that. That's, right. They're just glass and realistic looking. Yeah. I want to talk because you've got, this is a, a, a six, you got a five inch model. How far, what's the range that I you have? I have a five, a six, an eight, a nine, and an 11. I won't show everybody That's this the 11. 11. Look, now, this one looks like it could eat this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, I kidded you a while ago, Mike, but really, I've gone to weigh-ins with some of these size. <laughs> <laughs> but my Lord, this thing is huge. I Those mean, things look real. So they do look real. Just laying there, you know. They, they look awesome. Look at that. But the action that comes through the water makes them look so realistic. Uh, those are awesome baits. Uh, but if you can, look at that eye. That eye is just, I like that eye. Mm -hmm. Those look realistic. Now you've got a good friend of ours, or a good friend of mine especially, uh, Bill Barton. That's correct. He's painting some of these for you. Absolutely. That's is he not a true artist? He is a man. He is incredible. He's incredible. He did an awesome job on some baits that I sent. He's done stuff customer. for Chris and I, yeah. and, and I meant, oh my goodness, he's yeah. just, and he's going to be at the show too. Bill Barton's going to be in our booth at Southern Woods Waters, and you got to come by and check him out. But hopefully, he's going to have some ready for everybody so, to see. All right, we want to. I want to talk about first off. 
in before the before the show started, Mike and I and Hunter were talking about. <clears throat> I thought you would throw these things on braid, but you're saying no. That's a that's really. Um, well, let me say this: braid works for some people, um, but I will say 90% of the people that I talk to saying that they lose a swim bait via email and Facebook PMs, um, they say they lose a lot of them are about from cast offs. And by probing a little bit further, 90% of those 90% people are using braid. Okay. Um, I think one of the problems that I'm seeing is, is they're not using big enough braid. Most people are thinking 40, 50 pound braid is enough. Well, actually, you probably need to use 65 plus. And what 80. happens is, is when you're throwing five to eight ounce baits, it's digging into the spool. It's not a jig. It's not a flipping jig. It's much bigger than a flipping jig. Mm -hmm. And you're putting a lot of pork. You're using eight foot rods, and it just, your, your line's digging in your spool. So and you're you, really building up a lot of uh, castability by loading up that rod and, and throwing it. And tossing it out. So monofilament, you feel like, and, and of course you're the inventor of it. You've used it numerous times. Right. Monofilament's done better. Correct. I, I, in my opinion, yes. How big in my you opinion, use? yes. How big a monofilament? I use 25 for most of my baits. Uh, 20 for the 5 inch, 25 plus for the, uh, or 25 for the 8 and the 9. Eight. Sure. Say 8, eight inch and above, you can do 25, 25 30. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. You know, and just check your line. You know, I usually have a motto every hour on the hour, reach how you knot. You know, and that's just. What's the knot you prefer? I use a weird knot. I use what you call a braid knot. A braid knot. A braid knot. And it's basically you start off like a polymer and you mm -hmm. just take the loop and wrap it around the two lines three times and you pull the loop through the other loop and cinch it. You're done. Uh, That's pretty neat. Yeah. Will you be on will you show people at the show how Absolutely, to do it? Absolutely, no problem at all. I got some line at the booth, so I'll be happy to talk over the braid knots. Because I'm gonna tell you something. I found out that knots in in the baits uh, go hand in hand, Absolutely. And, and you need to throw uh, to throw some of these baits. You need to use the right knot. Exactly right. And, and some of us aren't. Boy, they uh, one of the magazines really put a downer on polymer knots. Mm -hmm. This is you know that's not necessarily the best knot to use Correct. for everything. Correct. So this was this is like you twist it a couple of times around right. both of them right. and then put it back through the loop. Exactly right. Simple and simple and simple. You know, and a lot of people yeah. use fluorocarbon. You know that knot. Yeah, the I was going to ask you. knot will usually overlap. And with four carbon, it's just one worst enemy. It will cut into itself okay. if you don't, if you overlap them and they twist to the side. So you have to tie a pretty polymer knot for it to work effectively. Polymer is a great knot when it's tied right. Oh yeah, but you're saying even if you get it twisted or turned, it can, it like can eat into in itself. In carbon, it'll dig into itself. Absolutely, absolutely. Great tip, man. I tell yeah. you what, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, do you recommend using a fluorocarbon? I'm a big, huge fan of fluorocarbon, just not for swim baits. And, okay. and and the reason I say that is because fluorocarbon doesn't have a stretch, and if you get one of those backlashes, and it just seems like in colder weather it gets a little bit a little bit brittle. I mean, there are some fluorocarbons that are a lot better than others. Oh yeah. Um, you know, if you use some of the premium ones, you should be good. You know, but you just make sure that it's it's it's. It, it, I like a little bit of stretch in my line, and for that very reason, because if it does hit something. Boom, you know, it's able to absorb it a little bit better. Mike, I got another question for you. What's your rod? I mean, do you go graphite, carbon, glass? What's the best rod to throw these swim baits with? Well, that's a good question. I like to use, obviously, you use swim bait rods. And a lot of people start off, you know, I say, you know what, go ahead and use your flipping stick. It's not the ideal rod to use because you're, when you're flipping stick, you're, you're trying to winch stuff out of cover. That's right. And you have single hook. Right. You know, and my question to you is, they say, well, why won't you use a flipping stick for everything else? I said, well, would you use a flipping stick for crankbaits? No. And that's what this is. This is a big crankbait. That's what so it is. So you, you, you need to use a rod that has a little bit of, it's got great backbone, but it's got some tip to it as well. Exactly. You know, a flipping stick's pretty much almost all the way back all, all the way to the top. <laughs> yeah. So you need to use a little bit of flexibility there, and you need to treat it like a giant crankbait. And that's what swimbait rods are. If you built right, if you use the right blank, they're a giant crankbait rod. Right. And uh, it's, it's very crucial not only to be able to cast it, but being able to keep that fish buttoned up when you've got treble hooks. Right. Awesome. I'm going to tell you something. Mike is just a wealth of knowledge in his own right. I'll tell you what, you got to come by the booth and check him out. Uh, he has bull shad baits and he's going to be all weekend. 
Premier yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right there at the, at the Tennessee State Fairgrounds. So it'll be a great opportunity for you to see him there. Well, I, I got to get to. From seeing that, he better brought a big truckload. He brought a truckload. <laughs> right? right. I'm going to tell you. Right. He brought a truckload. <laughs> hey, I, next, I got to talk to Chris. Chris, all right. I've waited you as wait. long as your best friend you can wait. ever wait in you his wait. life <laughs> for this because he's been itching up to this for days, y'all. What is this? Because you gave me a hint of something this morning. Uh, basically, what we come out with, this this is the new snow spin. This is this is a quarter ounce, but it's got three alt hook. And I've got so you these. changed the hook. Can I change the hook? You did change the I hook. I did change the yes. hook. It, I went from a two op to a three op. That's what and I And with the three eighths, I've got a, it in three eighths ounce head too, and it's in a four op hook. So that's one change we've made. All right. Now, we've kind of sort of ventured off into the walleye fishing. You, you know, this ain't a bass fishing show. This is. This is a fishing show. This is just a fishing <laughs> show. You guys like sonars. And uh, lo a lot of times when I'm fishing a sonar, I always take my back hook off anyway. So why not put a spinner back there with a good, good quality sampo swivel? And that right there will catch the fire. The walleye. That's walleye catching. The walleye right there. and sauger, and smallmouth. And smallmouth. And I've I've got these in three colors. I've got them in chartreuse. I've got them in silver. And I've got them in gold. And I've got them with the option of willow uh, leaf blade. Uh, all right, wait a minute. I got to go to the product of the week. Now, let me, product you're going to do it, but let's go right now. We're going to do our product of the week, and that is what, Chris? This is the new bait that I'm going to debut tomorrow. No, nobody's seen this yet except for these guys right here, but I call this the buzz off. What this is is an inline buzz bait. You can, put your, you can have your choice of a frog, a swim bait, a big 10 inch worm. Look at that. Or you can use the Rage Crawl by Strike King. Yeah. Something yeah. that cuts up across the water. And the unique thing about it is. I wish you it, hadn't it, said that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. real easy to change the hook out. You can you can change the weight of your hook. Uh, you can e even change the style of your hook. Well, even with a frog, you can go to a, a, a double, double barred uh, frog hook. You can do that. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. This is a very, very versatile bait. Very and, and it's fixing to be your buzz bait it's city here in a minute. Yes. I and, mean, it's uh, not going to be long. It's not going to be long. And that right there just is a, just a big fish catching. It just has the big fish. I'm going to tell you something not else. as much as this thing. But, I'm going to tell you something else that's working on it. But I'll tell you when I get you in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I have a limited number of these available at the show. Come by and see me. We'll explain it. Uh, also, in, in the near future, I'm going to do colored blades. At least things. I'm going to do a black on black, a white on white, a chartreuse blade with a white trailer. Uh, just. We're going to change it up some. We're going to change it up some and give you guys just uh, all like kinds of different options. Great right. river bait as well. It is a good river bait. Good we river. got to take a break uh, right quick. We're going to come back talking more fishing right here on more of Southern Woods and Water. Yeah. 